Hi, my name is Tara Levitt, and I am a technical support scientist for immunoassay platforms with 19 years experience. Proper sample handling is essential for running immunoassays. From sample collection and storage to sample dilution requirements, each step is critical to achieve the best results for your research. This video will outline best practices for preparing samples for use in milliplex, multiplex assays. It is important to avoid multiple freeze-thaw cycles on your samples. Most milliplex protocols recommend less than two freeze-thaw cycles to ensure accurate sample concentrations. A proper and consistent pipetting technique is key to accurate data, especially if multiple users will be generating data in collaboration. Maintaining properly calibrated pipetters is important, and training on best practices for pipetting can substantially increase pipetting precision. Use reverse pipetting for more accurate dispensing. Begin by depressing the plunger past stop one and aspirate the liquid. To dispense the liquid, touch the tip against the well wall and push the plunger only to the first stop to dispense the intended volume. Do not go past the first stop as the residual liquid in the tip is the difference between the original aspirated volume and the desired volume required in the well. From there, the same sequence can be used to aspirate and deliver liquid to additional wells using the same set of pipette tips. Follow Milliplex protocol instructions for sample handling and dilutions. Always read the entire protocol before proceeding. Analyte concentrations may differ between serum and plasma, so it is important to be consistent with the use of sample type throughout a study. After serum or plasma samples are separated, they can be assayed immediately, or the samples can be aliquoted and stored at minus 20 to minus 80 degrees Celsius. Vortexing after thawing is recommended for a homogeneous sample, followed by centrifugation to reduce the possibility of bead aggregation. Hemolysis can result in increased proteolytic activity and analyte degradation, primarily due to enzymes released from lysed cells. Trace hemolysis in samples collected with protease inhibitors may be acceptable, but gross hemolysis will likely interfere with assay performance. Plasma collection using EDTA as an anticoagulant is recommended. Care must be taken when using heparin as an anticoagulant since an excess of heparin may provide falsely high values. Other anticoagulants have not been extensively tested and are not recommended. For serum and plasma samples, refer to the kit protocol for instructions on how to dilute samples for use in the milliplex multiplex kit. Cell culture samples should be centrifuged to remove debris and assayed immediately or stored at minus 20 to minus 80 degrees Celsius until needed. Fresh culture media should be used as the matrix solution in the blank, standard curves, and control wells. If cell culture medium is used as a matrix solution, be certain there are no proteases, phosphatases, or supplements present which may interfere with the assay or generate inaccurate results. If samples are diluted in assay buffer, use assay buffer as the matrix. Some kits may have specific requirements. Always refer to the kit protocol before planning your experiment. We offer select kits, which were developed and tested for use with other sample types, such as urine, cerebrospinal fluid, and cell lysates. For these kits, please refer to the kit protocol for specific sample preparation procedures. For sample types not outlined in the kit protocol, download our tips and tricks brochure for detailed processing information on many additional sample types, including tissue extracts, tears, saliva, and more. For more tips and tricks on milliplex multiplex assays, visit sigmaaldrich.com slash milliplex tips. <laughs>